Could you imagine the Earth as a giant frozen ball spinning through space? Close your eyes and picture this. White vistas stretching to the horizon on what used to be the Earth's ocean. There's an ice pack at least a thousand feet thick and temperature a numbing 50 degrees Celsius all across the globe. There's sheets of ice that almost meet the equator. Continents where water and ice have evaporated, rain has stopped, and weathering has slowed to a crawl. The landscape here is stark. There's nothing but sterile brown rock. It's almost like Mars, except with more ice. These would have been the scenes of Earth to a time traveler 700 million years ago. But Earth was very different than the world that we know today. Plants and animals had not yet appeared on land, and only relatively primitive life inhabited the sea. The continents were mostly barren rock, and the oceans didn't contain fish or lobsters or seaweed. There's good evidence that even the atmosphere is quite different, with much less oxygen at present. There is mounting evidence to suggest that two very intense global glaciations happened at the end of the Neoproterozoic era. One being at about 710 million years ago, the other being close to 650 million years ago. There are a few mysteries associated with these intense glaciations at the end of the Neoproterozoic era. Most importantly, other glacial debris found all across the globe today that suggest that glaciers were present in the tropical area of Earth, possibly even converging upon the equator. The next mystery are the associated iron deposits, called banded and iron formations, found during the same time, suggesting that the Earth's oceans were completely covered by ice, and therefore creating an anexonic or oxygen-free environment. The most compelling clue is the finding of cap carbonate rocks on top of these glacial deposit rocks. Cap carbonates are formed in warm humid weather, while glacier deposits are made by glaciers. It's very interesting that one is following another almost immediately, suggesting that there was a widespread period of global cooling followed by an intense heat. Finally, the carbon isotopic variations associated with cap carbonates that are found before and after the two glaciations of the Neoproterozoic era suggest that there was little life at this point in the oceans, which quite possibly means that they really were frozen over. The snowball earth theory coined by Joe Kirschfink was created to explain these mysteries. If the oceans were ever completely covered by ice cap, this would explain the lack of oxygen in the water, the drop stones in the tropics, and the greenhouse effect happening immediately after caused by volcanoes, causing a vast increase in cap carbonate. If the earth's oceans ever did really freeze over com almost completely, this would explain glacial drift being found in formerly tropic rocks, as well as the presence of very rare banded iron formations and volcanoes created during the snowball periods could possibly cause a runaway greenhouse effect, causing immediately, immediate superwarming of the earth. This immediate superwarming will lead to the creation of cap carbonates almost immediately after the creation of glacial till. In order to understand the theory behind the great freezing of the earth, we need to define a few things. Albedo is the diffuse reflectivity or reflecting power of a surface. The more radiant the planet reflects, the cooler its temperature is. With high albedo, snow and ice cool the atmosphere and thus stabilize their own existence. If ice ever forms at latitudes lower than 30 degrees north or south of the equator, the planet's albedo will begin to rise at a faster rate because direct sunlight will strike a larger surface area of ice per degree of latitude. This can cause a runaway freezing effect. The cycle of carbon on planet Earth is another important thing to understand. Normally, the endless supply of carbon given off by volcanoes is offset by the erosion of silicate rocks. The chemical breakdown of the rocks converts carbon dioxide to bicarbonate, which is washed to the oceans. There, bicarbonate combines with calcium and magnesium ions to produce carbonate sediments, which store a great deal of carbon. Silicate weathering is sensitive to climate, and it's faster where it's hot and wet, and slower when it's cold and dry. During the Cryogenian period, which encompasses the Sturgeon and Maranoan snowball earths respectively, there was a rare preponderance of continents in the tropics where it is hot and wet. The global rate of silicate weathering was very high at this point. As a result, carbon dioxide concentrations fell and the global climate cooled because there was less greenhouse warming. This caused global cooling, which in turn lowered the silicate weathering rate, ultimately stabilizing the climate system in a new colder state. The breakup of a pre-Pangean supercontinent named Rodinia, which began around 830 million years ago and continued for nearly 200 million years, allowed for an even more silicate weathering, 
Silicate weathering rates are low when a 